The following episode of the weekly word is has some technical difficulties. So you're not able to see me personally in the video at all. Um, when you hear me, it's going to become black unless I'm reading from the article. But please still enjoy the video. Thank you. Okay, our next on the weekly word in our flashback Friday, so we take a look back at Tupac's life legacy and impact he had on society on this Wednesday, December 27, 2017. As we say hello everyone on this Wednesday, December 27, 2017, welcome to the Weekly Word. Today's segment is a Flashback Friday segment. I know I was supposed to head it up last Friday. That ain't happened. So we're going to post it. It's going to be posted today. Today's segment will be on Tupac and his impact on society. Now, I couldn't find any music that was, you know, not copyrighted um, from him um, to play for you guys, but I was going to play Dear Mama from his 1995 album, so that's a really great song, but I couldn't find anything like that that was, you know, not copyrighted, so I'm, not, I'm, so I'm not going to use any, any, any songs, but what I will do is I will um, read to you a, uh, a article from Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone published an article last year saying eight ways how Tupac changed the world. So I'm going to read you two ways he changed Two the decades world. after his death on September 13, 1996, Tupac Shakur endures as one of hip-hop's most iconic figures and its most powerful enigma. His life was a tas ta ta tapestry of often contradictory images. The concerned young father created like his son in a video for Keep Your Head Up. Dringy rappers spitting at cameras in his throat around his 1984 child for sexual assault. The artist who animately yet eloquently picked pushed back at Ed Gordon's questions during a memorial memorable internet TV. And the man who seemed to predict his own demise when I Ain't Mad at Shaw video released weeks after his death depicted him as an angel in heaven. Although he's no longer with us, the myth of Tupac, the thug angel remains, no other artist better illuminates hip hop's fault lines between regional pride and mainstream success and the struggle to transcend and elevate beyond humble origins while honoring the streets that raised you. His wayward, conflicting expressions of pride, militancy, and gangsterism resonates in a world where black men and women celebrate their heritage and collectively organize against their racist America are yet are also cautious to protect themselves from each other. Fans, particularly East Coast rap listeners who are, after all these years, still harbor a grudge against him, will continue to paint whether Tupac's albums can measure up to Nas and Malik, the notorious big IG, ready to die, or Jay-Z's reasonable doubt. No one can deny the way he transferred hip-hop hip -hop into his signally mus muscular, tattooed, ball-headed, bandana-clad and material some of the ways Tupac changed hip-hop and bikes to pop culture forever. Shakur's appearance in Juice as Bishop Troubled High school teen who fashions himself to a cold hearted killer is the first great dramatic performance by a rapper in a movie. Yes, Ice Cube launched his acting career with his understated depiction of the cop and crack dealer Dope Boy in Boys in the Hood, which preceded Pac by a year. Months after Juice debuted in theaters in January 1992, Ice T would become a movie star in New Jack City. But Shakur, who studied acting while attending high school in Atlanta, commanded the screen with effectiveness that no rapper turned moonlighting actor have managed it for and few have done since. While he didn't realize the promise of the early breakout role, he managed a few more solid acting before his before his death, including the overheated reprisal of his bishop template and basketball jump above the rim, a nice turn as a hero and did jazz musician and the under underrated indie flick gridlock. He also appeared in two episodes of A Different World in nineteen eighty three with Jada Peek and Smith. He is the man who single Haley transformed a common epithet for a criminal into a source of masculine strength. After recording two albums, the metal two apocalypse now and the slightly improved strictly for my niggas, Shakir unveiled his crew, Thug Life, an acronym for The Hate You Give Little Infants Fucks Everybody. At the time, it seemed like an unnecessary variation on the gangster trope that dominated West Coast rap at the time. However, his reimagining of a word that the Oxford Dictionary defines as a violent person, especially a criminal, into a positive attribute resonated. Tupac's version redefined the word thug into a made of triumphs over systematic and social societal obstacles. But in the 1994 Cleveland Quinnette, bold enterprises had remained 
who sells bold thugs in harmony. The word has been since been adopted by Young Thug, Slim Thug, and too many others to mention. The Weekly Word officially has a Patreon. If you support the content on this show, please consider pledging money to the show at www.patreon.com slash weekly word. Welcome back. Tupac, I like Tupac. Tupac is a very, very influential artist. He did some really great things. Um, his music was on point. And it talked about really his life. You know, a lot of times today, these artists who claim to be hip-hop artists, they don't talk about three things. Oh, they, they only talk about having sex, getting money, and smoking. Yeah, I, I know this man was not necessarily like that. This man was talking about really just that went on in the black community and with his family. Jeremiah talked about how his mama was ha- had, him, had him really young and was on crack cocaine and on drugs, and a lot of people could relate to that. A lot of people could relate to a lot of things this man did. He was a very powerful person in the media, and that, and, and he had a very big impact on you know society back in the nineties. And you, but there's this thing that's still going on. People are still wondering: hmm, Is he alive? Tupac is not alive. He's been dead for twenty one years. He's not alive. You know, there's this rumor that's going around, oh, he might be on an island somewhere. He's not alive. He is dead. As far as I know, he is dead. He is dead. He's dead. He's dead. Not to, not, not, not to say, oh my goodness, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. No, 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 no. He's dead. Like, he's, he's gone. He's not alive on an island somewhere. So, otherwise, he was a really great person. He really made an impact on the people that listen to his music, and he will forever be, be missed. We'll be right back. Follow The Weekly Word on its Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages at The Weekly Word 17. And new episode information coming up next. Welcome back. On the next episode of The Weekly Word, we'll be discussing our story time segment on my very first crush. You'll be very excited to hear my very first crush. Until then, I want you to like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want you to follow us on our social media, on our Facebook, our Twitter, and Instagram pages at The Weekly Word 17. Also... You could follow us on Patreon. Log on to patreon.com slash weekly word 17. Not weekly word 17. Just patreon.com slash weekly word to um, pledge $2, $5, $7, $10, $15 a month. You can see what the description is. Please, if you like this channel and you like what I do here and you want to help me get better equipment, you want me to, you want me, you want to help me get this channel to greater heights, please consider pledging. Two dollars, five dollars, seven dollars, ten dollars, fifteen, or even a dollar, because they do offer you to tr- pledge a dollar um, to this to this show. So please consider doing that. Until next time, I thank you so much for watching.